So a few days ago we did our first video on the Gen 3 Hemi and uh, I went over it and my impressions of it and I'm, I was I, I loved it. Um, and I said, yeah, i got to do some research here. I need to learn this engine. So once I went over the, the basics of it and I was satisfied, you know, that I really wanted to go further, I said, well, now let's look at some of, these, some of the known flaws to this thing. And uh, one of the things is it's notorious for is eating camshafts, eating roller camshafts. And, you know, which, which in and of itself is very unusual. Now, um, I could see a roller going bad or two rollers going bad, but I saw many examples uh, when doing my research of multiple lobes being bad, but the center of them being just completely dredged out, which meant that the roller itself had locked up. What could cause something like this? I tried to find you know, the reason, I, I went through countless forums and I, I, I spent like hours trying to find an answer, why is this happening? And generally we would come up, oh, cheap import, you know, cheap Chinese lifters or, you know, I'm like, yeah, I could see a cheap Chinese lifter going bad on one lobe, maybe two lobes, but how do you explain like a whole engine or, you know, with all having that same issue kind of simultaneously? Couldn't find any answers. I, told, I saw things about uh, class action lawsuits against Chrysler. Chrysler can't answer the question when this happens. People are paying like 5,000 bucks to have their camera and lifters. Can you imagine that? 5,000 bucks to have their camera and lifters replaced on these things. And it's a regular, ongoing thing. So I said, you know, I'm going to have to do some detective work. And, uh, and what I found here, uh, I'm telling you this right up front, right? This, this isn't speculation, right? This is absolute fact. And if you have one of these engines handy, you can look at it. You can look at it yourself, and you can see all of these relationships I'm going to talk about. And I mean, it's it's indisputable. This is what's wrong. That thing has a very serious design flaw, and and it's not just a small thing. It's actually in the in the in the, in the basic construction of the engine. So I says, well, let's see, lifters. And I happen to have a box of lifters from a couple of different engines. So I started going through the lifters, and what I found was I had repeating marks on these lifters. And I'll show you. So you see on these three, we have this rusty sort of tarnish, right? Now it doesn't come off, it's not just grease or dirt, you actually have to rub it, and I mean, you could probably scotch bright it off, but it's there, it's on there, it's not from handling or laying around. And then, on these lifters, we're clean on the other side, and we have this scuff mark. And this scuff mark is uniform, it's the same, and this isn't an engine that failed, this was, this was an engine, all of these rollers are okay. But we've got an area here that was obviously not seeing any lubrication, and we've got an area here that was, that was obviously seeing some sort of force. And what I've determined was that the lifters with the, with the, with the marks on them, right, with the, the lifters with the, uh, the scuzz on them, are from the bank, the lifter bank, that's being pushed down as the camshaft spins. And the ones with these marks on, oh look, I got that backwards, right? The ones with these marks right here are on the upswing. So as, as the cam is coming around, it's pushing up on this. Now why would we have these marks? These aren't marks that I've seen on any other lifter ever in my life doing this. And it's consistent and repeatable through a bunch of lifters. Well, the only thing that could do that is a lack of lubrication. When I say lack of lubrication, this scuff mark here is because this lifter is not riding on of, of an even surface or film of oil. And so it's able to cock in the bore. And these, with the dirt on them, are never seeing, whoops, they're never seeing full lubrication. So the top of the bore is dry. That lifter bore should have an even film of oil all the way around it. All right, that's a problem, but that doesn't necessarily explain why the rollers are going bad and eating into the camshafts. The next part does. So, again, we're talking about the design characteristic of this engine. Before we talk about that, I gotta show you on a, like a normal V8, right? So, a normal 
typical, this is a small block, right? On a typical engine, the camshaft, right, rides within a very small distance, a half an inch or so of the reciprocating assembly. So as the crankshaft is spinning and the rods are on it, it's throwing oil. And the lifter, or the, the, the camshaft, is being drenched in oil. That's why during the break-in period you have to run the motor at about 2,000 RPM, because at about 2,000 RPM, that's when this thing is really throwing oil and the camshaft is drenched with oil. Now, on top of that, right, and remember, it's just, it's an open area between the bottom of the, of the camshaft and the top of, you know, the, the crank. So there's no restriction between the oil getting slung off and the camshaft. And then, on the top side, the lifters, and these are, these are, at, uh, these are, these are a small block, these, these are at a very similar angle to the ones in the, in the, in the new Hemi, but the bottom of the lifter bores, these are directly oiled, and the bottom of the lifter bores overhang the lobes of the crank, so, or the camshaft. So any oil that seeps between the lifter and the bore drips directly down onto the lobe of the camshaft. So in this configuration, the camshaft is always completely drenched in oil. You'll have failures, but not from lack of lubrication. Or lack of, 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 of volume, you, know, you can have you know, bad oil or, you know, or not enough zinc from a flat tappet cam, but they'll never be starved for oil. Then we get to this. Chrysler did two things with this engine that almost guarantee that an engine that's used in certain circumstances, namely uh, extended idling, extended uh, low RPM operation, will almost definitely have camshaft issues. The first is this. Well, they moved the camshaft way up, and we talked about that already. And they moved the camshaft up to give the lifters a clearer shot at the, at the uh, you know, the push rods and the rocker arms. You know, on the surface it looks like a good move, but here's where they went wrong. If you come here and you look down into the valley of this block, you'll see that there's a main oil galley it's cast as a tube and runs right along the bottom of the cylinder bores. Okay? Not only is the camshaft moved further away from the reciprocating assembly that's throwing oil, but we've got this tube right here, and this tube is blocking a significant amount of what gets thrown off the camshaft, off the, the, the crankshaft, which would normally be used to just keep the cam saturated in oil. And on top of that, the lifters, let me grab two of these lifters. Look in here. The lifters, if I push them into position here, the bottom of the lifters, look in here. The bottom of the lifters do not overhang the lobes. The bottom of the lifters are outboard of the lobes. So any oil that does get, that does get around, you know, between the, the lifter and the bore, if it does, when it does seep down, it's not being dripped onto the camshaft. It's actually being dripped down into the, into the, the, the crankcase of the engine. Then, on top of that, you have this drain area. Now remember, these lifters are oiling through the push rods. This was a design Chrysler first used on the 1981 to 1987 Slant 6 when they went to hydraulic cams. So what they did was, there was no oil galley in the, in the, in, in the engine that could feed a hydraulic lifter, so they fed it through the push rod assembly. And Chrysler did the same thing with this. It's fed through the push rods. Now any excess oil that comes off of here, normally let's say like on a Slant 6 when, when, they, when they pulled this, on the slant six, the oil would drip around the outside of the lifter. The lifter is facing straight up, more or less. In this situation, anything that comes from any excess oil that goes between the, the push rod and the lifter goes down into this opening here, this drain bag opening. Problem with that now is that that drain bag opening doesn't come anywhere near the camshaft. It's draining like a half inch outboard of the camshaft. So literally, none of the oil that's coming through this 
passage up here actually hits the cam. The only time the cam is lubricated, has any substantial lubrication, is when the engine RPM is up high enough to throw the oil off the, the, the crank journals, you know, the, the rod, that normal windage. The only time that cam is getting adequate lubrication is at, let's say, 1500, 2000 RPM. If you spend a lot of time just idling along, that cam is literally lubricated by luck. Just whatever drops happen to find it here or there. That's what kills the camshafts on these things. You know, you can see right here, here's, just, just to put it in perspective, here's the bottom of the lifter bore, right? My hand is on it right now. And obviously, you know, this is the outboard edges of the crank of the camshaft. And look where our lifters are, right? Any, dri any drainage between the lifter bore and the bottom of the motor is here. It's outboard of the lobes. They never get any. Now I did see some people speculating that the lifter or the, the, the roller is supposed to be lubricated through the body of the lifter. Uh, that there was a hole at the bottom over here. And uh, I saw this in a couple of different places. So I took a lifter apart just to find out. So here's, here are the parts that are inside of it. And if you look down inside the plunger body there, there's, uh, there's no hole. There's no way for any oil to access from the push rod down to the roller part, except by what drips. This is a bad design flaw. How nobody's come up with it, and I'm telling you, I searched and I searched and I searched and I couldn't find anything. And it was only after I really started to, to scrutinize this that I found these things. Um, fix for it, you know, I'm lost for a fix. There's really not much you can do. You can't open up the space underneath because that main oil feed, where the main oil galley is there, is just cast right, right through the middle of the block and there's nothing up top. I mean, I imagine you could add a set of dribblers along, along this casting right here. The cam, you can't do anything between the cam and this because it's like there's, there's no clearance. So I imagine you could drill and tap and, and, and put a series of, of dribblers here. I don't know where you would, where you would take the oil from. I don't have an engine test, test you know, run test stand or, or anything like that to do that kind of testing on. So I'm not even gonna speculate on that. But um, this is a fatal flaw. This is a, a, a an ex this is, you know, I'm doing engines for, for, for a lot of years, right? And, and I've never seen anything quite like this before. Um, it's, it's a bad design. It's that simple, it's a bad design. We're gonna go ahead and build this thing. Um, any thoughts of having one for myself, I, I've, I've, you know, that's it, it's off the table. I don't want one of these for myself. I'm gonna build it, we'll stick it in Kiwi's car. We'll go as fast as we can with it, you know, and, 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 and play around with it and, and all that. I still want to learn the engine, but do I want one of these for myself? No. It's a bad design. I'll see you tomorrow.